Good morning. And we welcome all of you that are worshiping with us in person here at East Nidros today, and we certainly welcome all of you joining us online today as well. Uh, nothing prepares our hearts for worship more than music, and we thank you, Ellen, for the music that you've given us this morning. The scripture for today is when we hear Jesus performing his first sign, as it said, when he turns water into wine. And uh, I kind of needed a sign this week. I'm singing at a funeral this Wednesday, and they gave me some songs to pick from, and I couldn't decide, and it's going to be on my eagle's wings since he was playing that last. There's my sign. We have a few announcements before our worship begins. Uh, we were planning on meeting with our post-communion, post-confirmation uh, students at Willow Creek today for our community youth group that we've started, but that is uh, postponed today. Uh, we likely will be meeting in February again, but we are getting information ready and we'll get letters out to people. Um, we got a plan of where we're going, uh, time we're going to be doing it, we're getting some costs together too. Uh, it's likely we were going to be heading to the Flathead Lutheran Bible Camp in Montana, uh, nearly 16 hours away, and it sounds like it's gorgeous out there, and we actually are going to have that camp kind of to ourselves to plan our own little uh, getaway. So we're looking forward to that, but we will not be meeting today. Tomorrow evening, we're uh, launching something new, a community Bible study in Baltic on the Keeping Baltic Informed Facebook page. There's been questions about starting a Bible study for people that can't make it during the day. So we're going to give that a try. We are going to be meeting at 6.30 uh, at the Baltic Church, and uh, tomorrow's night uh, study is going to be on the first word in the book of Romans. So, uh, and there's no level of uh, qualifications or how much you've studied the Bible. There's no pretest before you get in. You just show up, and uh, we'd love to have you there. Then uh, there will be Bible study here, our afternoon Bible study, as we continue to work our way through. Uh, the Lord's Prayer at 2 o'clock here at East Naderos. And then Tuesday, once again, we've got a, at the annual meeting out, it seems like, and now there's another deadline for the February newsletter. So if uh, this involves you, please get your information into the office in a timely fashion. And then confirmation uh, will be at East Naderos this week for 7th and 8th graders at 6.30. Next Sunday is the 23rd, and that is when our annual meetings are scheduled at both churches. Uh, they've taught me to shorten up the worship service so that uh, there's time for the annual meeting right afterwards, and these annual meetings do not take much time, um, but they're important. And uh, one of the important things is that there's enough people there to have a meeting, so we need people here. So I encourage you to uh, stay around uh, for the uh, annual meeting next Sunday. Birthdays this week. Crystal Cerna, Kaylee Cord, Grevy, Jim Wenland, and Bruce Gunderson all having birthdays. Those are the announcements that I have for you this morning. If there are none from you, I invite you to stand as you are able as our worship begins with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. And we begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join as we sing our opening hymn, verses 1, 2, and 5. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. 
Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord God, you showed your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son. As he brought gladness and healing to his people, grant us these same gifts and lead us also to perfect faith in him, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. First lesson today is from Isaiah 62, 1 through 5. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name. That the mouth of the Lord will give, and you shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But, the, but you shall be called Mr. Delight is in her, and your land married, for the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today is 36, 5 through 10. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O God. Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who do know and your favor to those who are true of heart. Second lesson today is 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit of utterance and wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts by healing by the same spirit, to another the workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the inter interpretation of tongues, all these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We sing children, the, Jesus loves me, if some children want to come forward for the children's message. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little 
little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning, Ranger. How are you today? Good. Do you see, why don't you stand up? Do you see what do we have behind you here? These are to hold things in the church. And I'm going to... Do you know what's in here? Nothing. Well, if, what if I pour it on top of you? Are you scared? No. No. What did you say? There's nothing in there, right? Yeah. Nothing. What do we usually have in there? Do you know? Um, well, it's like water or something. We have water in there usually. What about this one? Did you see inside of this one? Yeah. Should you look? What's in there? Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing in there. Have you ever, sometimes I remember kids coming home from school and they said, what did you have to eat at school today? There was nothing. Really? There was nothing to eat? Well, no, there was nothing that they liked. Um, but we, we're going to have a story. And do you know what we usually put in here? What do we usually put in this one? We have wine in this one and water in that one. And what do we use water for? I did this to you. What do we do? We use it for baptism, don't we? And I took some of the water and I poured it on your head and you were claimed as a child of God. And in a few years, we're going to teach you about the Lord's Supper because you've been coming up with your parents to receive that. And then you get wine. And each of these things, water and wine, are very important for us in the church. And we're going to hear a lesson where Jesus says, fill that up with water. And when they took some out, it turned into wine. Yeah, Jesus does some pretty amazing things and he changes everything. And we hear this wonderful story where Jesus changes everything for us through these sacraments. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you have not come into our lives to make it a better place for us, but to change us completely. And you turn to us, especially when we are empty and we have nowhere to go and you show up and change our lives completely. And for that, we give you thanks. And all God's children said, Amen. Thanks for coming up, Ranger. All right. I invite the rest of you to stand for the gospel acclamation. Hallelujah. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. And the Holy Gospel for today is according to John, the second chapter. Lord, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out. And take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you've kept the good wine until now. And Jesus did this the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise and you may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. This is the first of very few times that John in his gospel mentions Mary, the mother of Jesus. John doesn't record any visit from Gabriel to Mary to announce the Messiah's birth. John doesn't include the story that we heard a couple weeks ago when Jesus was 12 years old and he amazed the elders in the temple while Joseph and Mary were wondering where he had gone. John waits to make any mention of the mother of Jesus until she is joined by Jesus, who is now fully grown and is just beginning his ministry, and then he appears with his disciples at this wedding in Cana. In the story of the wedding, John even mentions that Mary was there before mentioning Jesus was there. He informs that Jesus and his disciples had also received invitations, but he first mentions that Mary was there. This wedding in Cana, where Jesus turned water into wine, is often called the first sign that Jesus performed. The first sign, as we will learn today, has a clear connection to the last sign that John records that Jesus will perform. This first sign of Jesus happens early in the Gospel of John, in the second, as we heard today, the second of 21 of the chapters in John. The only events that John records to us about Jesus before this wedding is he tells us that Jesus is the Word of God who became flesh. John reveals that Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan, and he began to take on the sin of the world. John reveals that John the Baptist pointed his followers away from himself and toward Jesus, who was the Lamb of God, to take away the sin of the world. And John reveals to us that Jesus has called some of his first disciples. But John makes no mention of any other miracles of healing before he tells us what happens at this first sign at the wedding in Cana. At this wedding, John reveals that it is Mary alone who knows something about Jesus that the newly called disciples, nor anyone else at this wedding, do not yet know about Jesus. And it is Mary's unsolicited involvement at this wedding that might give you the impression that the goal of Jesus is simply to make your life better. But Jesus, changing the water into wine, is the first of many signs that when Jesus reveals himself to you, Jesus is about to change everything in your life. At this early point in Jesus' ministry, it was only Mary who had the slightest idea of what having Emmanuel, God with us, would mean. And God was with them at this wedding. You would think that if this couple who invited Jesus to their wedding had any inkling about who Jesus was, wouldn't they have wanted him to perform the wedding ceremony? How cool would it have been to have Jesus sign your marriage license? At least when I'm invited to a wedding reception, I'm at least called on to give the blessing at the wedding for the meal. But Jesus wasn't even given this role. We're told that Jesus was invited. But don't forget, Mary was there. And she knew more about Jesus than anyone else. John only mentions that Jesus' mother being present at this wedding. And we, uh, reading some biblical historians, they believe that Joseph, the father of Jesus, had already died. But I don't think it mattered, because if Joseph had been at the wedding, it still likely would have been Mary, something that a mother would do, who would have called on Jesus when she noticed that the wine had run out. And we can't be sure if this chief steward was not doing his job and had no idea that the water, the wine had run out, or if Mary might have looked his way and noticed a frantic look on this chief steward's face when he learned that the wine was gone. But in either event, no one from the wedding staff was taking any action to remedy this situation. It was Mary who after realizing this embarrassing miscalculation of wine that was being consumed at the wedding, went to Jesus and said, 
they have no wine. What might seem like a disrespectful response from Jesus to his mother when he tells Mary, woman, this is not your problem and it isn't mine, is not the first time that Jesus will speak to his mother Mary in that way. Even Mary did not understand what Jesus meant when he said, my hour has not yet come. But remember, this was the first sign that Jesus performed. It was not his only, nor would it be his last, that was just a sign. But Mary takes charge of the matter. In spite of Jesus saying, it's not your problem, she tells the servants to do whatever her son tells them to do. Mary doesn't waste any time by getting permission from the chief steward who was in charge of the wedding and who was also likely responsible for the wine shortage, nor does she go to him and, and uh, chastise him for the problem. Mary notices that there is no wine. Mary doesn't intervene by noticing that when the wine was starting to run out, Mary knows that the best time for Jesus to reveal himself is when there is no wine. Mary calls on Jesus to perform his first sign by making an abundance where there was nothing to begin with. Jesus reveals himself by starting with nothing and turning it into a blessed abundance. As you recall, Jesus didn't show up at the bedside of Lazarus when he was sick and almost dead, he waited until Lazarus was completely dead, and then he created new life where there was only death. We know that Jesus had the power to simply refill, refill those containers that had been used for wine, and then he could have commanded these jars never to be empty again. But instead, Jesus tells the servants to go to those six stone jars and fill them with water. And these were not just any jars. These were jars that were used for ritual purification. They were not for storing wine. They were only to have water in them. They were used to make people's hands clean before they ate. And in the lesson that Kendra taught our confirmation class this week, there was a story about them cleaning their pots and pans in these, these uh, jars as well. They were used to make things clean with water. And this rite of purification was a Jewish law that Jesus' disciples were later going to be accused of breaking when the keepers of the law had noticed his disciples eating before washing their hands from water from these jars. But this is another example in Scripture when a miracle happens without Jesus even giving a command. The change of water to wine had already happened when the servants were told to draw it out. All of this happened without the steward, the chief steward, even knowing that Jesus had done the work. After the chief steward tasted the wine, he didn't go to Jesus and thank him for the situation. He didn't know that Jesus had done it. He went to the bridegroom and coached him on the right order of serving good and inferior wine and then commented that the bridegroom had done the opposite by keeping the good wine until last. At the end of the story, we hear Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana and revealed his glory and then the disciples believed. When the disciples first arrived at the wedding, they had little idea of who Jesus was. For some reason, when Jesus called his disciples and said, follow me, they did follow him. But after going with Jesus to a wedding where there was no wine and witnessing his power to transform water into abundance of new wine, it was then that they began to believe in him. Water and wine. We can't help make the connection between what happened with these two common elements that transform this wedding in Cana with the sacraments of our faith. These are the same common elements that along with God's word are necessary for the sacraments that transform you. It is in your baptism that Jesus drowns away your sinful self and gives you his righteousness so that you will be changed forever. 
And it is in the Lord's Supper that we stand before Jesus as a betrayer. We stand before him just as Mary did when she saw him hanging on the cross. And it was then, this was the second time that Jesus spoke to Mary as he did at the wedding in Cana when he said, Woman, behold your son. After Jesus died, the soldiers took their spear and pierced the side of Jesus. And as few recall, blood and water came out. Mary must have recalled the day when Jesus turned water into wine as she watched him complete his last sign. Yes, Jesus turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana. But Jesus has done far more than this sign for you. Jesus has turned the signs of water and wine into sacraments. Sacraments that deliver to you the promise of forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. And it is through these sacraments that Jesus changes everything for you. Amen. For those of you noticing the tune that is printed in the hymnal, you will notice that it is not following that same tune, but you'll be familiar with the tune that goes with the words for Hymn of the Day. I invite you to stand as you are able to confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, today we uh, add some more names to our prayer list. Actually, there are three that are not listed in your bulletin that uh, are funerals for people. That um, One is a neighbor of mine that had a funeral just this past week, and the uh, other is a member from Willow Creek Congregation that I'll be singing at our funeral. And then next Sunday, a little unusual, but I will be preaching at my had a band teacher's funeral who was a band teacher at Tri-Valley all the time that I was on the school board there and the funeral will be at the school so we are remembering him in our prayers but we are going to begin to walk with Sherry Folds now as she goes through some uh, uh, treatments and uh, so we remember her and we keep you in our prayers.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, you manifested your glory in the sign at Cana. As you restored creation through the shedding of Christ's blood, pour out your grace in abundance. Give us joy and gladness in the revelation of your truth in the person of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, preserve your Son's bride, the church. Make it her constant joy and delight to preach the good news of forgiveness in her Savior to poor sinners. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, you blessed the wedding at Cana with your presence and honored it with your first miracle. Strengthen and give your gladness to all married couples and their families. Be present in their homes and lives with your free and abundant forgiveness and preserve us in the true faith from each generation to the next. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, we bring before you the sick, distressed, and needy. And especially this day, we pray for Sherry Folds, Janet Leffring, Doris Crogstead, Vance Davis, Tom Jacobson, Charlotte Johnson, Dorothy Sittig, Donna Lee Boyd, Betty Jean Benjamin, Chantel Brandy, Ryan Volts, Tanya Vallon, Rhoda Wold, Ella Riswold, Paul Ramsdahl, Gail Severson, Julie D. Piazza, Brenda Schmidt, Sherry Brandy, Clara Shank Gabriel, Dennis Riswold, Brenda Bertrand, John Jurgensen, Daryl McMahon, Fred Tiedemann, Eugene Hawkes, Javen Einan, Jessica Shaw, and the families of Maxine Mannion, John Neiman, and Lee Ferguson, and others whose names we now raise silently before you from our hearts. We pray that you would give your binding comfort in every circumstance, that in Christ we shall not die, but live and declare his works. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your grace you have instituted holy matrimony in which you keep us from unchastity and other offenses. We implore you, send your blessing on every husband and wife. Do not let them provoke one another to anger and strife, but let them live peaceably together in love and godliness. Strengthen them with your gracious help in all temptations and help them to rear their children in accordance with your will. Grant us all to walk before you in purity and holiness, putting our trust in you and leading such lives on earth that in the world to come, we may have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace with one another. receive the offering.
we sing the offertory hymn. Please stand. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are in offering. Lord, use our voices, Lord, use our hands, Lord, use our lives, they are yours, we are in offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, we give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you, we are an offering, we are an offering. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please join as we sing our sending hymn.
Go in peace and serve your neighbor.